Welcome back to the School of Obedience. It's good to be back in the Word of God. Um, <clears throat> we're living in a time that's very difficult. And I'm not talking about the pandemic that's going on right now. Obviously, that's part of it. But the day and age we're living in, so much suffering, so much difficulty, so much hardship in the world. Somebody was telling me about an interview that they had watched um, of a shanty town in a country that's currently in lockdown. And the lady that was being interviewed said that the lockdown doesn't make any difference because with or without the current pandemic, there's still no hope for us because we're still suffering. Life is still difficult. So it doesn't make a difference to us. We have no hope anyway. And was just looking through comments on a certain video of a preacher in the sermon that he was teaching. And a lot of the questions in the comments were, why do Christians suffer? Why is life so difficult? Why is life such a burden? And it seems like the life that we're living today is sucking the hope out of people. But I just want to today talk about having hope in Christ because there is hope in Christ. The problem is that so many times we have hope in the world. We have hope in ourselves. We have hope in other people, hope in our jobs, hope in our governments hope in money and we are let down we are let down no matter what level of life you're on okay you can be at the very bottom or you can be at the very top there's people living at the very top with all the money in the world and they suffer with sickness disease death around them and people lose hope and some people go as far as saying that's why i don't believe in god because even though we do our best to accomplish all we can, still we suffer, still the world suffers. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He brought new hope to us. He brought new hope to us. You know, when I, when I sit and I, I look at what's going on around the world and I read um, different news sites and watch videos from different news channels, there is more suffering in the world than there is happiness. There's more pain and suffering in the world than there is prosperity and happiness. And I know that a lot of us have set our sights to prosper, to own property, to be rich, and that's our goal. But when you look at what's generally going on in the world, the billions of people that are suffering and struggling. Some countries have unemployment rates that reach 90% and above. There is a hopelessness in this world. So when Jesus Christ came, when he came and he walked on this earth in the flesh, which he did, and the reason for his coming was to die for our sins, to redeem us to God. Because of God's righteousness and justice, we had to be punished for our sins. And he came as that punishment to redeem us from our sins. But while he was here on earth, he brought new hope. He brought new hope to us. Because even though the world around us may struggle and suffer, there is hope. And this hope is found in Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to talk about today. In the book of John chapter 14, he says from verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, that's the hope 
that we have in Christ, a hope that is eternal. I want to point this out to you very clearly right now. This world, this world system has nothing for you. Yes, we live in, in, in a world system where we need to eat and sustain ourselves and have shelter and we need to survive. But at, at the end of the day, this world system has nothing for you. Everything that is beneficial to you for eternity is in Christ. He brought a new hope that is found in Christ. So he says now, no matter where you are, what you're going through, I know that as of 2018 to date, they say suicide rates across the world have shot through the roof, but because people are losing hope and people are losing hope because there is no hope in this world. The hope is in Jesus Christ. People are putting hope in currencies, in, in, in preachers, in family members, in, 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 in governments. There is no hope in this world. The hope is in Jesus Christ. And he says there, first of all, in John 14, 1, do not let your hearts be troubled. No matter what you see, no matter what you're going through, no matter what difficulty you are experiencing in your life, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. And this is so important because for you to have this new hope that comes from Jesus Christ, you have to believe. You have to believe in the Father. You have to believe in Jesus Christ that he's here for you to lead you, to give you this new hope and to give you this new life. You must believe. Turn your back on the world and turn to Christ and see this shining, glowing light of hope that is here to lead us to eternal joy. I want to keep repeating and emphasizing in this teaching, there is hope only in Jesus Christ. And it is not a hope that is for the present day only. It is an eternal hope. But we've got to turn to, we've got to cling to, we've got to look to Jesus Christ and hope in Him. He has to become our everything and our all. Turn to Jesus Christ. In John chapter 16 and verse 33, when Jesus is talking to his disciples, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay, so here he says that in me you'll have peace. There is a peace that comes from Jesus Christ. When you are living in Christ, how do you live in Christ? It's simple. Pray always and obey and live the word. It is important for us to live the basic Christian life. If you have not seen the teachings on the basic Christian life, I will link them up here. Go and see part one and part two of the basic Christian life. But this is important when you're living the basic Christian life, obedience to the words of Jesus Christ, worship, prayerfulness, fasting, giving, and following after Jesus. You follow after Christ by being obedient to his word. And he says that you'll have peace when you are in me. And how much people sacrifice to have that peace of mind to have that peace that surpasses all understanding. And this is only found in Jesus Christ, not in the world, not in yourself, not in self-confidence, but in Jesus Christ. He says, in the world, you will have tribulation. There will be difficulty in the world. There will be hard times in the world. And we are experiencing that. And people have been experiencing difficulty. It's a part of life. Some people say hardship is a part of the journey of life. People say that one thing that you are guaranteed of in this world from when you are born is the fact that you are going to die. The hurt, the struggle, the difficulty, the pain of this life. But in Christ, we have peace. We have hope. 
And it's time for us as believers, as non-believers to turn to Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that he's going to, when you turn to him, he's going to solve world issues and he's going to solve your economical difficulties and your current hardships in your life. But what he will do is give you hope. There is a better place. There is a hope for a better world. And I know to a non-believer talking about eternity with God, talking about a paradise, heaven, is something that's so far-fetched. But draw close to Christ, experience Jesus Christ and see the reality of Christ. And in knowing Christ in his fullness, you will know that his words are true. And what he says he's preparing for you, he is preparing for you. And you will know that heaven and eternity is real. In the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Christ is coming. Christ is coming to transform us. Christ is coming to change our vile bodies. This body that is so prone to difficulty and temptation and suffering. This body that is so fragile and weak. A simple virus or strain can kill the body, disable the body. But Christ is coming to transform these bodies. So we have bodies that are glorious like His. But He says, let your conversation be in heaven. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in Christ who will lead us to eternity with Him. Let us all begin to hope in Jesus Christ. There is a better life. There is a better place. And it is not here. It is not here. It is where Christ is. He says, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may also be. Listen to me. He wants you to be where he is. This is not the end of our journey. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. And I know for some people, the struggle of your life is real. The pain of your life, the burden of your life is real. But I want to ask you, endure hoping only in Christ. Go through what you have to go through, but only hoping in Christ. Endure the difficulty and the suffering of this world. Your redemption is soon. Eternity is closer than you can imagine right now. In the book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 13, the Bible says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said to him, Sir, only you know. And he said to me, These are they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Come out of great tribulation, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Christ says in this world, you will have tribulation. We will have to endure, but if you can stay focused on Jesus, constantly washed in the blood of the Lamb, constantly overcoming the world through Christ, because He has already overcome the world. If we can gaze our souls constantly on Jesus, we will overcome. And one day, glory be to God, we will stand before the throne of God, clothed in white garments, praising the almighty God, standing right before his throne, beholding God face to face. God will no longer be hidden. He will be fully revealed to us. But we must overcome the tribulation of this life. Is your heart broken? Are you in a state of hardship right now? Is your mind all messed up because you don't understand how you're going to make it through the day? Hope in Jesus Christ. 
hope in Jesus Christ. And I know some people will say, well, Jesus, hoping in Jesus is not going to feed me. It's not going to save me from this illness that I have that's given me a death sentence. It might not. But hope in Christ brings you to eternity with him. Hope in Christ brings you to a place that is beautiful beyond imagination, brings you to a place that God has set it out that we all be there with him. And all it takes is for you to turn to Jesus Christ and put your hope in him. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 from verse 3 says, Blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. As we've read what Peter says, God has brought us lively hope again through the resurrection of our Messiah and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his promise to give us incorruptible things, but not in this world, in heaven, they're waiting for you. And if we can just have faith, even though we've been tried in the fire, even though things are difficult now and the burden is heavy, he says your trials bring something out of you that is more precious than gold. All we have to do is endure. But I want you to listen to me, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want you to listen to this. This is important. If you do not gaze on Jesus Christ, you will not have hope. It doesn't matter what goes down in the world. It doesn't matter how things are going to be going forward. Have hope in Jesus Christ. Through your tears, through your pain, through your difficulty, your struggle, whatever it is, have hope in Jesus Christ and endure. The moment you lose hope and lose focus on Jesus Christ, everything hits you hard like a, like a tsunami wave coming at you and you become overwhelmed and you drown in the sorrows of this world. And it's not worth it. It is not worth it. Have hope in our risen Messiah. He came. He lived on this earth. He was crucified, died for our sins, but rose again. And in his resurrection, when he ascended to be seated with the Father in heaven, our hope became alive. Our hope was resurrected again. The day Jesus died, the disciples were lost in a dark room, sitting with no hope. But on his resurrection, hope was birthed in the church again we now have hope in our glorious savior jesus christ and he said that if we hope in him he's coming again to take us to a place out of this world away from the flesh away from the carnality and the difficulties of this life may we endure hoping in jesus christ let's go and read in the book of first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 and 18 the Bible says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's what I've come to do today, to comfort you, that whatever you have to endure, endure. Whatever you have to go through, go through. But one day 
we will meet with our Savior. He will come back for us. I know it seems like it's been a while, it's been long, and we've been waiting and we've been patient and the struggles have been real. But He's coming and we will be caught up. And in that day, when we caught up with Jesus Christ, we're never coming back. Never coming back to the suffering and the difficulty of this world. Never returning to the pain of this life. This life, this life will be our past for all eternity. The cycle of humanity and the flesh would have ceased and we will be with Christ for eternity. The book of Revelation chapter 21 Verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Verse 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. The former things are passed away. He will make all things new. In your life, in my life, in the life of every believer, He will make all things new. Wipe away your tears and all things will pass away. But it's going to take time to get there. Whatever God has set out to do, we just have to continue hoping in Christ. Because without hoping in Christ, we are doomed in this world and in the next. Brothers and sisters, there is a better place. There is another world, not this. There is a better world, one that God has prepared for you. There is a better place, but endure hoping in Jesus Christ. Let's read in the book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 2, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Verse 3, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Verse 5, And there shall be no night there, and then no need of no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. We will reign with the Lord for all eternity. There is a place for every believer in Jesus Christ. For those of you that are not believers in Jesus Christ, run now to Jesus Christ. Turn now to Jesus Christ. There is hope. There is peace. There is eternal salvation in Him. For those of you that are believers in Jesus Christ, continue to hope. Do not let your faith fail. Do not let your hope be stolen away from you by this world. Let us continue in hope. Let us continue in Christ. There is a better place, a better world, a heavenly world. This world is not our home. This world is not where we belong. There is a place prepared for us. May we continue to hope and believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching this God bless you. Please, before you go, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Click the bell icon so you are notified every time a new teaching is uploaded. And please remember always, as true disciples of Jesus Christ, we learn, we practice, and we teach because that's the only way to do it. Amen. I'll see you in the next one.